Welcome. Well, that grand solar minimum news channel is getting it all wrong again. Let's take a look at what their most recent snafu is. Well, they're trying to get into the prediction business. They're trying to predict sunspots. And they get it completely wrong. So let's hear what they have to say in their own words. Now, you've got to promise not to laugh. Well, OK, those of you that are regulars on my channel and know a lot more about the sun than Grand Solar Minimum News does can laugh a little bit, but otherwise, not at all. And once again, guys, no sunspots for today. And that will now put us at 47 days without sunspots in 2019. OK, he claims it's 47 days without sunspots. Well, actually it's 46, but who's counting? Apparently they aren't. That represents 71% of the time we've had no sunspots. I've plotted the sunspot number as a function of time for year to date. And you can see that the average sunspot number over this period of time has been 4.5 spots per day. For the last solar minimum, the average over a similar period was 0.61 spots per day, a factor of seven lower. So you can see we have a long way to go before we are approaching solar minimum conditions as yet. All right, taking a look at our blank sun. Note he is using spaceweather.com to get the information on sunspots, and that's notorious for missing sunspots. If you want to get the accurate number for sunspot numbers, then you have to go to the Solar Influences Data Center in Belgium, which is the world's official site for recording sunspots. Uh, we see an active region in the southern part of our star below the equatorial region. Uh, it's still not named as a sunspot, so uh, again, officially looking at the sun, we do not have any sunspots to, re to report on at this point. And maybe our next chance will be this active region that's all the way back on the other side of our star. So again, um, Interesting enough, I was talking to a subscriber not too long ago about predictions of um, sunspots and how many days we're going to go without. And he made a really, I thought was a very educated estimate guess of 35 days straight without sunspots. And right now we are now day 32 heading into 33. Now I believe I'd said something, you know, Thinking back now, it may sound a little ridiculous, but I think I said somewhere between 45 or 48 uh, days without a sunspot before we see one. And right now, uh, if this is anything to look at here on the other side, that could be the possibility of our next sunspot, as we do have a couple of little bright regions. But again, we had a very bright active region coming over the eastern limb a couple days ago, and it really didn't form into anything at all. Well, let's go back to my plot of the sunspot number as a function of time. And you can see that there was a sunspot group on the 21st of February. And to my arithmetic, that makes a gap of only 11 days. Now, that was a pretty small spot and very short lived. So we might have missed that one. But the one on the 13th was not. In fact, I believe he mentions it later on in the broadcast. And that's 19 days. So I don't know how he's getting 32 or 33 days from a period of time that is just 19 days. While they were patting themselves on the back about how quiet the sun was and how this was definite evidence for us slipping into a grand solar minimum, the sun was doing exactly the opposite. It was producing sunspots. I'm going to show you three movies, one from SDOHMI, the white light movie, where you can see the sunspots and see how early they appear. Secondly, the magnetogram movie from HMI, which shows how soon these uh, magnetic features started to appear. And you should have guessed from that that there was going to be some more activity. And lastly, the AIA movie, 191 Angstrom, just because I like that particular data most of all. So enjoy.
The first sign of any sunspot activity was at 10 UT on the 4th of March. This would be about 5 a.m. East Coast time in the United States. It was a small spot region near the equator that lasted for about a day or so. By zero hours UT on the 5th of March, we had two active regions on the sun. The one I just told you about and a new one was forming to its north and east. Now that's the one that eventually grows into the large region we're seeing now. The situation now is that the first region has disappeared, but the region to the north has now grown significantly and is liable to continue to grow for a time being. Although at the moment there doesn't seem to be any hint of any flares going on in it, but that's always a possibility if the growth continues. So to summarize then, Apparently, Grand Solar Minimum News can't even count the number of spotless days. They seem to omit sunspot regions to support their Grand Solar Minimum narrative. And while they were telling all their viewers that there were no sunspots on the sun, thus proving that there was a Grand Solar Minimum on the way, we had not one, but two spotted regions on the sun, which they apparently didn't notice. I don't know why anybody would bother to listen to the nonsense that they put out but apparently some still do, which is really a pity because they're missing all the wonders of what's going on on the sun. Now I thought I said not to laugh. Until next time, goodbye.